In this training video, the link ratio techniques module is discussed, followed by an introduction to the extended link ratio family, ELRF, modeling framework. Let's actually go to ECMIS Plus and examine the LRT module. There we go. All right, so we'll now open the workbook database provided with the system. To do that, click on the open database icon here under edit the toolbar, click that, brings up a dialog where you'll see a list of uh, databases here. Um, we're looking for the one Workbook 104A, select that, either double click on it or just click open down the bottom here, this dialog. All right. We're now going to look at the triangle group Mac, so you see all the triangle groups listed in the panel here. To find it quickly, go to Query View click on it and just double click on TG name and start typing in MA. Now see it, it filtered on all the triangle groups starting with MA and we can now open and select our, our Mac triangle group easily. So to open it, either double click on it, click on the triangle group tab or right click to open up the context sensitive menu and just click open. When it's opened, you'll see a window like, like this, in which you see the models, data sets, etc., which have been covered in early videos, those tabs. What we're going to be looking at is the uh, ILC data set. Let's just see what these data sets actually represent. We'll go to the data sets tab. We can see that their triangle type is incurred losses. There, we've got incremental cumulative, which is what these I and C represent. Uh, and they do not have any exposure, inflation, or premiums or associated triangles with these data sets. So modeling this data set is going to be equivalent to just modeling the triangle because we don't have any other information. However, in XS Plus, remember we only model data sets and the reason for that is that we've got to have access to this additional information if necessary. So we never actually model the triangles directly. All right, go back to the Models tab, select ILC, and then we're going to open the LRT module. So to do that, make sure the ILC data set is selected, and then click on LRT. And you'll see a window open like this, so by default the All tab is selected, and on this tab we can see all the uh, tables and graphs that are available in the display. So if we scroll down on the window on the right here, we can also scroll in the individual tables as well to view them. Now before we go further, I'll just quickly cover those four buttons in the LRT toolbar, that is the buttons here. We've got load model, that's load selections that you might have saved in the database. At the moment we don't have anything saved, so it's not going to have it. If we open that dialog by clicking on it, we do not have any selections there. Cancel that. We've got the ability to save models or save selections into the database. I will do that a bit later, but it just opens us the same looking dialog to load model, but instead we're typing a name and we can save it. Right. We've also got this last end periods. Now what that does, if I just go to the ratio selections tab briefly, we've got these white, these three ratios weighted average of last nine, so that's the last, last nine um, ratios we're looking at and we take these different averages of them. Now we can actually change that last n to being, for example, the last five or last four. Click OK. And it's now gone and updated those three ratio methods. So we can do that with um, any of the last n that we want to select. Also in this dialog, you'll notice when I opened it, you've got this um, ultimate period and that just corresponds to the last development period that you want to use in the triangle. And we'll adjust the ratios ratio to ultimate occurred accordingly when you do one of the smoothing algorithms. Uh, you can also put in your own ratio to ultimate if you so wish. Okay. And the last button here is the forecast button. If we do that, uh, we'll forecast with our current selections and we'll look at doing that a bit later in this video. Okay. We're going to return to that other ratios tab. On this display, we see the normalized data. So that is the data adjusted for exposure, if any. 
Now, if you remember, when you're looking at our data sets, I'll just come back to that window by right-clicking on the Triangle Group tab, select Mac, and that brings this window to the foreground. If we go to uh, data sets, we see we don't actually have any exposure here. So if we double-click on the data set to open it and minimize uh, database view, then minimize the triangle, tile again. So if you notice, I went to the drop down arrow, if I did that a bit quickly, drop down arrow, select minimize triangle groups, minimize that additional window that was in the middle on my screen, and then just tile, tile again to get the two side by side. All right. Now you can see that the normalized data in this case is exactly the same as the original data in the triangle would not. Uh, because we don't have any exposure, there isn't any change in this, this data here. The ratios are uh, self-explanatory, but just the ratio of the cumulative, so this number divided by that number is this first ratio, this one divided by that one is your next one, and so on. All right. Um, and if we go now to the um, ratio selections tab, We can see the same ratios table that was on the data ratios, but now it's at the top. I just maximize this window now. And we've also got the selections, uh, which are different ratio methods applied to these ratios uh, in order to obtain the uh, standard chain ladder or volume weighted average, arithmetic average, geometric average, and so forth, with the different ratio methods that are applied in this table. Now, if you want to maximize one of the uh, one of these tables, just double click on the title bar and it will maximize it in the window. Double clicking on it again will, will restore it to be able to see the other um, tables or graphs on the page. And that applies to any um, table or graph whenever we're looking at a window. So double click again to restore it. Um, you'll also see that in this, in this top part of the column, so above this black line, we've got all these different methods. Below the line are actually input uh, rows for industry and judgment. Okay, and you'll notice that the final selection, which is uh, what we will be using to forecast, is by default set to the standard chain ladder or volume weighted average. But these industry industry row you can set in manually or copy and paste in numbers. For instance, I can just enter in 3.5, say uh, 2.48, uh, 1.5. 3, 2, and so forth, um, to make up my industry data with appropriate industry ratios. Um, for judgment, I can again enter any ratio that I like, for instance, 3, 1.72, uh, 1.25, and so forth, uh, according to what I believe is the best ratio. Um, to enter values into the final selection, uh, right click and just press copy to selection, or click on F4 and it will uh, propagate whatever ratio is currently selected down. If you want to select an entire row and propagate that into your final selection, for instance, you want to use the geometric average, just double click on that title and it will propagate all the, the entries down. Alternatively, if I want to use a particular ratio, um, again, I just use the F4. If I wanted to use average of last four on two to three, and it will select it down. The two-parameter and three-parameter smoothing introduced in 10.4, and to use those, we can either select the entire row, like so, if you want to apply the smoothing algorithm to the entire row, in which case we just right-click, and say we do two-parameter smoothing. If we want to do just a subset of the ratios, um, we can just select them by dragging, again right-clicking, say three-parameter smoothing, and what that will do is start with three parameter smoothing from whichever ratio was first selected. So in this case, we first started our curve at one to two, so we don't actually calculate a ratio from zero to one, and just start our curve at one to two and propagate it out. And you'll notice that on the right of the display, we've also got ratios calculated for this two ultimate period as well. All right, so there's a lot of flexibility in this table. You can enter in, in your judgment and industry any, any values you like. You can also, if I just restore back to the original data ratios, you can also select a ratio in this table. If you double click on it, 
um, it will again propagate it down to the final selection. So I changed 5 to 6 with, with this value here. And so you can enter ratios out of your original data as well. So we now come to the last tab at the moment on the selections graphs. And that gives the same uh, selections uh, table that we had earlier on the previous panel that we were editing. We've now got the addition of these selection graphs here, which uh, give a graphical display of the, the curve. So for two parameter smoothing is that green line. Um, that yellow is the three parameter smoothing. Obviously, we didn't calculate one for zero to one, so it actually starts at one to two and just puts a one there. And we've got these other ratio methods here. We can add a by left clicking on these colors, we can say view the ch uh, standard chain ladder ratios, um, geometric average, which is probably hard to see over the other ones, um, and so forth. Okay, and again, you can click on the title to be able to maximize it if you so wish. And TU just means to ultimate in this, this case. Now we've got, once we've got our selections, um, I'll just put a few more in, I think the, so the standard chain ladder uh, for 0 to 1. Actually, no, I'll, I'll use the um, two parameter smoothing now. Add for that one. Okay, add that ratio, that one actually. So for so let's say let's say this is my final selection. I'm now going to save it. So to save it, come back to this M with a downward arrow. If you put the tool, uh, mouse over it, it says save model in the tooltip. And let's add Let's save it as a selections, and the date is the 20th of October. So, right, and obviously you can save it with any meaningful name that's going to uh, be meaningful for you in the future. Um, now that I've saved my selections, uh, so I can restore them later. So if I now click load model, so the first button here, I've now got these selections to be able to access it. And it's associated with the data set ILC. Um, now I can click this green uh, forecast button, so the green triangle with the yellow arrow. I could have done it before, I just wanted to save the selections first. Uh, once you've clicked that, you then get an option of, as to whether you want to use inflation or discounting. We won't use any today. And just click OK to complete the forecast. So it's got the first tab at adds, so it adds three tabs. It's the forecast tab, we've got the incremental forecast in the top um, display, and we've got the incremental, uh, sorry, the cumulative forecast in the bottom part of this uh, forecast tab. And again, you can double click on the title to maximize it. In the incremental forecast, we also get the ratio to ultimate as well, um, if applied. We've also got the born herder ferguson and expected loss ratio forecast. Now, we don't actually have any premium information associated with the data set, so this output is of uh, limited value because we don't actually have access to that information. We wasn't provided with the data. We've also got the summary uh, information, and it's got a breakdown by accident here, the ultimate minus occurred to date, um, and the mean incremental by calendar year, and also whether we used any inflation or discounting, and if so, what was applied. Um, so we didn't actually use inflation or discounting, so both of these are set to zero. We've also got this comparisons tab here, which just allows you to compare what the forecast in the calendar year is, the next calendar year with, uh, sorry, next calendar year here with what was forecast as in the previous calendar year. Now you're looking at the these totals here, so you've got to exclude various development periods when you're making the comparisons, and that's what um, this, this, sorry, this forecast actually does. All right, now to that is to, um, concludes the section on the LRT as such. We're now going to um, return to the PowerPoint display and show the link between LRT and ELRF because the subsequent training videos are going to focus on ELRF before continuing into other areas of the system. Let's turn back to PowerPoint now, and I'll just resume the slideshow. All right, so length ratios are just a comparison of columns, and we saw that with the the cumulative when we related the, the cumulative um, at at y, 
we were looking at the data to get the ratios. So what we do is we just divide our y uh, by x to get our ratios. So, and we can actually graph these um, of the y versus x. Okay, and what we find is that the av an average link ratio method is just an average trend line. So each ratio, because we've got y divided by x, can be seen as a trend line going from the origin to the point. Um, so this is a this is a slope trend line. This is another one, and so this average trend line is is like an average um, average trend through the origin. Now, if we're looking at average trends, then we can also talk about it in terms of a regression analysis. So equivalent to the uh, average link ratio method here would be in a, a, a regression analysis where you're forcing the line, so the best fitted line, to actually go through the origin down here. And this reformulation of these link ratio methods as a regression equation was done by Mac in 93. And we're using these equations here at the top, and what and what we do is set the this delta, which is our what we're using as our weights, into the equation. We set that equal to one, and if we follow through the minimization to find the best estimate of b, or our ratio, we actually find that the best estimate is given by the sum of y over the sum of x, which is equivalent to how we calculate the chain ladder ratios or volume weighted averages. So MAC and chain ladder ratios and volume weighted averages, they're all the same thing. They're not talking about, they're going to be calculating the same ratios. They're not actually a different method as such. They're just a, um, different formulations of the same method. And what the extended link ratio family does is look at this, these equations and generalize it. So we've got control over what values of delta we have. So in the MAC method, we set delta equal to 1. We can set delta equal to 2 and get the arithmetic average. We can set delta equal to zero and get the uh, average weighted by volume squared. Now we also have control over this this regression equation, so that we can use uh, send it to the, the Murphy method, which we'll cover in more detail in a later video, where we add an intercept here. We can also add trends into the uh, equation as well, which is in this this slide here. So we can add. We can generalize it completely by having an intercept, trend parameter, and ratios all within the one framework. And we'll continue discussing this modeling framework of the LRF in the next training video. Thank you.